Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me in the start of a new campaign, or at least a video. In Heart of Iron Freezing, the Metro Mod, in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Red Lime. Red Lime. But welcome to the Metro Mod. Um, currently the mod is early alpha stage of development. As of the initial release, the mod's being worked on by a single developer, so... We've got to make sure that we keep things in perspective. Thank you. Revolution. There's no chance that the Red Lime have sprouted from the Sokolinichian Sky Line. Every edifice and facade of the line finely detailed with statues of Stalin and Lenin. Monuments of once revered saints lay as a surviving testament to the world before, like Egyptian tombs. Its ephemeral aura of power drew in those far and wide pilgrims to witness what was. Over a period of time, all became reverence, and finally devotion. With the world as we knew God, and those only faded memories of the past existed. It gave hope, an opportunity to build a new social bastion unshackled from the burdens of the past. Surviving. Como so the figures and those who lived under the reign of socialism began to put emotion in socialist revival. Overthrowing local stations and installing revolutionary councils across the Sokolnitschitskaya. Declaring a first international, their goal united the entire metro under communism. Andrei Moskvin was one of such revolutionaries, the robustness and vigor personally spearheading the revolution and sound soon found himself. Overseeing the newly established revolution. Moskvin found himself soon to be beloved by supporters. Symbol of the revolution. Um, We can all use more, but let's go with this one. A bulwark of socialism. Birth from the uh, so called Nichayaskaya. The testament and glory of the Soviet state itself emerged at the line, formed the Komosov's figures, surviving veterans and many more who were nostalgic for Russian socialist past. Nowhere else was properly emulated his majesty, and the might of the Soviet Union has been the red line. Fallout. However, what first began as a social people became a full scale war with the rest of the metro. Many stations opposed to the desires of the newly established red line, those on an ideological basis, capitalist stations, and others opposed to the workers' revolution. A forming station like the station of uh, the Hyzianic League, a diametrically opposed to the Red Line, fighting a coalition of stations to fight against the Red Line, thus thusly starting one of the bloodiest conflicts in the entire metro. But is plunged into the meat grinder, and precious resources churned for the war effort. A stalemate of attritional warfare, with neither side yielding, but becoming weaker as the war elapsed. As a realization that the dream of a united metro under socialism was fading, unrest and mutinies began to arise from within. The ideological differences spurned on full scale insurrection, those leaving the fight and establishing their own stations, weakening the Red Line's support for the war in the process. Their ideals grew too ambitious. Our ideals shrink as war waged on. Change the popularity of... Well, I don't want to lose any political power. We don't give him one a day. Question of the military? Let's do a question of economics. Our economy has grown simply, uh, has quite simply reached a slump. It would take more pragmatism than just a mere injection of funds to fix the ramshackle state it's in. Also, to let you know, I will leave the, the, this mod in the first link in the description below. But peace. As the war dragged on for the further, uh, further um, uh, neither the Red Line or the Hansa saw the possibility of victory against the other. Pouring every resource they could to, scra to scrap, to kill, maim, destroy the other side, with the end result being inevitable decay of both parties. As both nations began to crumble and rot from the inside from exhaustion, soldiers and citizens alike protesting against the war. Too arrogant to kneel to the mob, either side were unyielding to submit to a peace agreement. If the deal was unfavorable to the ideologically die hard amongst the ranks of each, it could lead to further disarm and spur more instability. Both both sides were too stubborn to come to peace and only wished to proclaim a victory against the other. Eventually, our peace was arranged in absolute secret. Andre came to realize the war could never be won against a coalition, with every day every victory piling up bodies, more wasted resources. Was this really the price to pay for socialism? However, it was not his decision to go ahead with peace. It was not even his dismay over the war. It was, in fact, his brother's own drive to declare peace. His younger brother, Maxim Moskvin, oversaw the peace talks at first without Andre's knowledge. The deal commenced. Plus Shad, a revolutionary, uh, was given to be given into the red line from Arbat. Arbat received the Biblioteca Imeni Lenina, which eventually was handed over to the polis. A guarantee of free access was agreed upon by all parties. <coughs> the red, red line was cut in half. Andre was championed by the people in the party alike for the peace. The inner circle of hard-blooded hard socialists social scorn of what they deemed a betrayal of the revolution, while also knowing that what it was Andre's own brother, Maxime, being the true negotiator of peace. A starting point which balanced or planted his brother's growing resentment towards him. Championed by the people. Championed by the party. That's the way we want to go. Is that Among Us? No. State of the Line. Andre, a member of the Revolutionary Council, now saw himself as a general secretary of the Red Line. Despite there being other competitors to that mantle, he and his will and tenacity made him, or saw him, take to the mantle of leadership. And his rule soon became unquestioned. Now in 2028, as the ashes of the Hazianic Red Line conflict began to settle, the Red Line finds itself ever increasingly sliding into a more dire situation. The so-called Nishiskaya finds itself in a precarious situ position, which must be addressed with dedicated hands. Many issues plague the nation, with more within, within than without. The economy has grown stagnant, and a policy of confiscation of resources levy for military still practice, making our economy unable to grow and develop from a subsistence basis. Neglect over the government's willingness to handle this, spurred on by the military's bloated control over all facets of business and daily industry, has spiraled into the common folk solely distesting the local powers which be. Even hush whispers against the state itself, these issues have only grown and festered in recent months. 
That's not the only problem to face, however. The fascist pigs of Tverskaya have recently become invigorated thanks to a new Big Daddy. Scuffles on the toes between us has only increased from spread of conflicts with recent weeks. Like the great patriotic war of old, we once fought and defeated them like. Uh, but the, defeated the like. Well, it took a great deal of sacrifice, a monumental effort of blood and iron, something way we may not be able to afford right now. We are the heirs of the Soviet Social Union. Lenin's will will not be stuffed out. Noted. Noted, noted. Ooh. Economic demobilization. Through focuses, events, and decisions, you'll unlock advisors to aid your ministry. Be implemented upon decisions and uh, change improve advisor bonus in specific matter. Oh. Look at this one. Economic demobilization. Well, the Hans of Red Line War are fading memory in the lives of their subject. The daily toil remains otherwise. We still follow the same economic policies and production quotas during the war no matter no more than half a decade ago. Despite Andre's best efforts to rejuvenate the or reju rejuvenate to otherwise the otherwise economically stagnant red line has proven to have hit several roadblocks. Now requires his unwarranted attention. Question of economy. Our economy has quickly simply reached a slump. Despite our best efforts to reform and rehabilitate the economy, which has proven to be ineffic inefficient. Most resources which haven't been allocated to the military or distributed to our R and D used to resuscitate our stagnant economy. A more direct approach is needed. Instead of the resources being spent to just patch up the bloating issue, a new method is be needed. Two solutions have been proposed. First is implementation of grants and other schemes aimed towards improving our station's administration's effectiveness at handling local issues. Secondly, a more fundamental solution is prioritizing funds aimed at growing our primary industries, such as construction and farming, being able to sell, be self-sufficient and support itself and spiritual growth. Improve the line. Well, construction research. Speed, agriculture. 5%. Well, you can't really build that much that fast, so, yeah, we'll double it anyways, because we can. Commander of Form, this is not bad. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, be unhappy with this decision. Well, formalized the Ministry of Economics. As an effort to combat r the rising resentment within our population, the economics of the red line must be formally addressed. On the close knit group of ministers and secretaries cannot keep track of every station, backwater farm, and pig carcass stall on the red line. With the wind winding back over military style grain and requisitioning, we can now focus on growing our economy. Council advice. Or console advice. <clears throat> the military are not too keen upon the recent changes. The chief of our armed forces and the hero during the haunts of war. He has built himself an ample reputation amongst the lower commanders. Idolized as the popular figurehead within the military, Viktor Kovchov was once a man who had nothing but respect for Andre. It was him alone, with his reputation underneath his belt, which endured or ensured Andre was his current position of power. Kovchov was a diehard communist, much like Moskvin. And the two ideals go outline. However, Kovchov firmly believes in the power of the sword, whilst Andre, with recent years, believing more so in the capabilities of the pen itself. Kovchov staunchly believed that the Red Lions, at a current state, is able to contest and fight against the Hansa. Hansa is weak and inefficient and completely holding the ring line itself. Only through lightning action and conflict can the Red Line preserve its position. It is boxed in, cornered by foes all around. Kovchov also insists upon removing or limiting power of the fickle Politburo. With a personal grudge for pencil posters and other bureaucrats, his ire are drawn towards the central metro uh, command in its early days, joining Andre's revolt against the inefficient CMC. Victor is not too keen upon these recent changes, to say the least. Removing the influence of the military and replacing it with a centralized power structure which answers the general secretariat and its officials, no longer two entities but inseparable. Kovchov fears, like from history's past, first. Paris, Troika, then Glasno, and then finally the state crumbles under a tide of uncertainty if and when the government will stray from its own ideals when Kolchov fears is already the case. Noted, much appreciated. Nice. Question. Assume this. Weekly stability goes down. Oh god, no. <coughs> do you get two cities though? A oh, Gwain. Gwain? Grain requisition. What do you have here? Lobby the political bureau for seven days. That looks a little better. Oh, improve the Department of Economics? Ooh. Uh, the word under crisis. Oh god. Protus rebates, huh? Well, question of the military. Our military stands bloated and remains bloated, and dire teams of rap need a ra rapid comprehensive overhaul. The only issue is the observed power of the military high command range of the red line. Removing their power is something to be done with caution, less risking tweaking twice about their allegiance to the general secretariat. Assume Kolag properties. Providing your citizens with economic rebates, especially aimed towards our agriculturists, will inject a much needed economic surplus into our economy. With added independence, however, it's been a growing concern that some of our farmers may indeed be too better for their own good. Farmers who have already begun selling too much grain are rising in the secret of middle class of kulaks, capitalists of profiteering right under our noses. Question of the military. Oh, we need to make some divisions too. Ooh, look at these guys. Special forces, huh? And then we have our normal divisions here. I like to throw more stuff on here. And we have the NKVD divisions with battalions. Let's see what we can do. Our military, once before the war the Soviet Union had, uh, one of the biggest and strongest armies in the entire world. Its armed forces were equipped with the latest and deadliest weapons of war and drove them second to none, from the Taiga of Siberia to the Baltics of Russia, uh, was supreme. The army both protected and preserved its workers and ideals, but today, now it seems like it's the other way around. Through a long line of inner decay, the military slowly withered and fractured to bickering fractions within the military. 
Despite the sheer volume of the manpower at their disposal, the lack of proper training procedures, and even pressing disregard for any combined communication between commanders ensures the military remains isolated and bloated. Poor logistics, and not to mention the severe corruption which is profoundly showcased with the high command. Outfitted in regalia and adorned with dozens of medals, most of which have not been awarded but snatched from traitors or scavenged. A military not out of merit or skill, but of arrogance parading as generals. The power must be removed. Oh boy. Unionizing inefficient sectors. <coughs> Standard wages and working conditions have given rise to our slump. The inefficient sectors of our economy must be approved upon. During the Hans Red Line conflict, local administrations were allowed to directly control interstation, uh, stational industries without involvement. But now the war has passed. As our mobility produces and sustain the line grows, we need the need for labor increases. Generals refusing new commanders. Oh God. Uh, we'll find it increasingly harder to find and train new budding commanders and generals for our army. Competency to allow orders from the high command has dropped exponentially. To make matters worse, our military has begun to take it upon themselves to sign roles in each of the corps without knowledge, although this has been the case for a while now. Chair picking orders directly from our head officers. Well, as usually they follow most orders and requests, now it's not the case, or even desired by the high command. Instead of hiring a practicing ideas such as merit, competency, and loyalty to socialism, it's rather those most loyal to the individual generals in question. Sort of a mini cult of personality flowering from each commander. Warlordship between our generals is never a good thing, and issue will be need to be dealt with. We'll take care of that eventually. Yeah, we'll do this one too. Nice. Question of Brodraskovska. Uh, this thing, the green requisitioning uh, based upon state quotas to help support and supply our armies immensely during the Hunts of War, but no longer are we fighting on all fronts. Our economy is stagnant. Our population drained from the constant seizure of food stock. Food quotas should be reconsidered. As uh, so we have national spirit, that's pretty bad. Oh, God, no. I'm going to remove 2031. Uh, Bastion of Marxist Leninism, which is pretty good. Intrastational Socialism, which is. Eh, it's not bad, it's not great. We have Fragmented Military, which is bad. Communist fascist conflict, which I don't want to lose any weekly manpower, but we get whatever. We're okay with that for now. Get more daily army speed. Improve the local in the chest sky. Commanders in the short supply, which is bad, and in decolonization, bad too. You know, get more construction speed, which is nice, but still. Commander 4. During the war, much of our ports were spread sporadically across the local in the chest sky line. Uh, uh, combined operations were infrequent, and given the nature of the war, with more comprehensive unified command structure, our force could be deployed more effectively and improved upon it from an organized committee. Also, we've got so much political power here. No rationing? Can we do anything about that? No. A question of grain requisitioning. Everyone works? You bet they will work. Sweatshops? Cool. It's over here. No support. Community support? <clears throat> grain requisitioning is a double-edged sword, providing your troops with the much-needed supplies in times of strife, such as the Hounds of War. A war exclusively fought in little pockets and distraught all across the metro. Supplies being moved to and from by an organized method was difficult given the linear nature of the war. So the army resorted to confiscating grain and other resources to boost their stocks. Whilst this indeed proved successful, it did it be, be too inefficient, or too efficient. Our reliance upon this tried and true method persisted. However, despite the war becoming a distant memory, the military still practices it to this day. One contributing factor as to why our economy is in such a slump. It's why it'd be wise to demobilize the rate of confiscation, however. Its reliance upon times of war is not to be questioned, nor is it something to avoid when war does indeed become clear. Decrease the intensity of requisitioning. Remove heavy mushroom requisitioning. Oh boy. Uh, add produce requisitioning. So it doesn't hurt our stability and... Well, open access property. Communal ownership, huh? Personal property. <coughs> Private property, okay. Open hours, border security. Open hours. Passport requirements. Isolationism. So, children education, basically, literacy. Maybe more research speed. Look, like advisor cost goes down, more research speed. No education. Okay, you can go up to here. But we don't get enough political power as is. What do we have over here? Disintegrating military. Oh, God. That's really bad. That would be better to get. Standing force. Force conscription. Mandatory service. Blood for the revolution. Oh, wow. Heavy mushroom. Oh, okay. Weekly stability gain. Oh. Or this one. We must limit all requisitioning now. Heavy. Station produce expropriation. Oh, so we can go to here. 10% more resource efficiency gain. Station. Gain more stability this way, too. Oh, yeah, let's do that one, why not? Demobilizing economy. Wow, that's so bad. Plan economy. Mobilizing war socialism. Aslan Kostoyev. I'll give more political power, which is nice, I guess. Tier 1. Alright. Bring tools, nice. More political power would be nice, but whatever. Um, question of brotherhood? 
sometimes more pressing to for Andre, and it hits closer to home. His brother, proven himself to be competent strategist within Eastern years, someone who in his day of treachery and betrayal, Andre could trust most of all. However, this would be true if Maxim had no security to spy towards his older brother. Low ahead of time, tooling, low ahead of time. Oh, hygiene. Sure. Why not? What is this? Improve the departments of economics. Sure, okay. Why not? Material designer? Well, I can't use anybody here. Oh, this is a guy. Question of Brotherhood. <clears throat> Maxim Moskvin, Andre's younger brother, always in the shadow and always upon a chip upon his shoulder. Maxim had always been jealous of his older brother, Andre's charm, success, and power. A brotherly relationship rotted in no more than simple rivalry. Was there any respect Maxim held for his older brother? Hard to tell, but that love had been weathered and been weathered away over the years of nothing. The only members Maxim could give of their youth wasn't the bond they once shared, careless children, but their bitter as many hope. Despite this, Moskvin holds him to his own talents. He may never be anything like his more talented brother, but Maxim holds to a resolve that few can attain. A strong brow, an unquestioned authority few could dare to go against. Self-confidence and true to oneself. Arrogance, possibly, but something to lead a figurehead. As knowledge of warfare will come in handy. Military theorist. Ooh. Warfare will come in handy. An advisor to the armed forces. Military theorist. General commander through po future focuses. Uh, that's alright. What are we now? We're council? Community? Oligarch? Remember the Pluto Bureau best for now. Become a general commander through future focus events. Well, it's not bad. Mr. Hackman will be unhappy. I like this one. <coughs> Good job, Max Mox Maxine. I guess we can't remove these guys, huh? So be it. Military Hackman. And with the US SS. Military renovations. Despite it's one of the largest uh, Armed for current armed forces in the metro, the state of our forces prove otherwise. A ragtag rabble with paper guns or pipe guns and fully fledged armed forces. Something needs to be done about the state. Still have young officers academy. The body officer, youth, and junior officers of today, and the generals and commanders of tomorrow, by fire, steel, and pure grit, they will reclaim the world and reclaim the revolution by and not by radiation this time. Young officer corps. The youth are the future. We must lead them, teach them to inherit the earth, which they eventually shall. We must also bestow them knowledge needed to preserve their line in the interests of the revolution. Some time will make our future commanders much more competent. Mr. High Command will be unhappy with this decision. Or MXP. And new academic draft. With well, the pressing matters dealt with, now the efforts can be made to rectify the slumped economy. Andre believes that with the introduction of new economic policies, the Red Line can become economically rejuvenated, if not even able to compete without the Hansa. There's no opting out of this focus until it's completed. The economic module. Well, I'm not sure what we can do with their political power then. Tier 3? Sure, why not? X Excavation method? Who's manpower? Well, I could try it. Nice. Um, mini guns? Oh, Schneck, you didn't even look at any of this stuff yet. Spec Ops. Guns. Got this one. We got Makarovs. Flamethrowers. Support equipment. We got the NKVD equipment. Do we have supplies? Yeah, we do have supplies. Just added this one too. Well, okay. Agitation. We received distressing reports that our armed forces are not following orders, but instead outright objecting. Our military commanders are alarmingly beginning to crumble and balkanize between two camps, loyal to the General Secretary of Moscow and the dissenters, led by Kolchov, who fears that Moscow's reforms are making the Red Line appear weak, meek and fragile. As soldiers begin to desert their posts, others take up arms and are coordinating entrances to and from stations. Block and trade and access to people. When in order to stand down, they refuse and instead threaten to open fire. Situations worsening by the hour and blood has yet to and will inevitably spill out. Kovchov, darn you. Mushroom revolts to make matters wor and the red line worse. With the recent agitations of the military, a group of our sisters early this morning were reported to have begun protesting in mass. Common folk disgruntled with the relapse in our economy and the abundant shortages of food supplies caused by overturn positioning. The protests are feared to swell and swallow the entire so called Nitschkai line hole. Production quotas are in slash and it's feared the only time. With time of inaction by the central government, the protests will worsen. And means of the revolution, it appears, will be dealt with in time. Well, the Mushroom Revolt branch of the Focus Street. If the National Spirit runs out before the Mushroom Revolt Focus branch is finished, it's a war will occur. Red Line in peril, peril grips the Red Line. Shaking to its very core foundations, Andre must direct lightly care for, to secure the preservation of the entire line. And our great Gorbut. We're disobedient members of the military, and the encroaching fears of a violent uprisings of our population. Not to mention those within our own party who have fled with secretive documents which could darn the entire Red Line if they fell into the wrong hands. Andre's government is in peril. The KGB still remains loyal and can still be good to use. Good to use. However, their leader is the last person Andre would have wanted. 
Gage will be given emergency power. Situation with the defector will be dealt with, and darning documents are stored. Conspiracy plot. Aslan Kostoya. One of Andre's closest advisors have fled the red line. Following the recent reports of military forces standing up against Andre's government, it appears that his own officials are repugnant towards him. Accompanying Aslan as he was fled during some important, uh, certain documents which had previously turned up void when his office was raided in the early hours of the morning. The items, which cannot be found, have potentially the potential to jeopardize the entirety of the line and fell in the wrong hands. He must be caught. That darn rat. Military mutinies. The situation with the military has worsened. Soldiers now outright refusing to take orders from the commanders. The commanders refusing to take orders from our officers, and the officers refusing to listen to the general secretary. This war is going to become widespread across the entirety of the Red Line. Confusion between all facets of the military structure, communication has ceased between cold shop, as well as in the central government. Whatever is the case, they are surely planning to do something dire. Appeasement won't work, but most of it's head. Well, the question is when. This is getting out of hand. Oh, crap. Tanza. I know we change change off for the duration of the national spirit. <coughs> oh god. Crowd stills. Mushroom revolts. Begin the purge. Change your military idea. Oh wow, the ideas are until ideas removed. Three decisions. Three hundred forty one days. Mushroom revolt countdown. Good god. Well, and dismantle mushroom revolt, because that one's going to expire first. The red revolters are no more than starving commoners who wish to recoil the flames and bring the whole line crumbling down. They prey upon the current issues and exacerbate them further, it has to be dealt with. Cut a bit. A dirty word to some. The KGB, NKVD, secret police. The list goes on. Despite what the crowd might say, the role is crucial to maintaining the order of the state. No more than that prevalent with the red line. Its current situation stands that is their service is pivotal. The state security bureau, KGB, was formed shortly after the formation of the so-called Nitschskaya. Many of its former Russian state security personnel, even with a handful of being former KGB members during Russia's communist days. Its main role is to seek spies within the state and assist with squashing dissenting or dissenters, and then the revolutionary figures. From then, their power is maintained through its usefulness. Chickas guards may be may any of the interests, and to and from the red line, detecting would-be terrorists and spies. Its newly appointed leader, a man by the name of Kotobut, has been risen to the ranks with incredible speed thanks in no part to his cunning and prudence abilities. Becoming one of the most important figures behind closed doors of the public at least. Becoming a personal advisor on there would be immediately beneficial, as a personal advisor would surely help quell the mounting issues within the Red Line. Corbett is not a man to be trusted, but the Red Line depends on him. Through the course of the game, Corbett will try to exert its influence across the Red Line. Certain decisions and events will see his power grow. Be careful, as there's no good or ideal way to remove his power, for the meantime at least. Subvert the growing resentment. Sabotage Revolution. Part of the government has Corbett. The revolution's only starting, it'll be a snowball if it's left unchecked. An idea provided by the state security is by planting spies in their own ranks and causing destruction from the inside. A monopoly on the bedlam. Scavenge successful. The stalkers have returned successfully from the surface. With them, they discover new valuable items which can add a nation. Oh, manpower? Smithing. Flamethrowers? Alloy, alloys? What flamethrowers? Do we need any more flamethrowers? Uh, you know what? Let's go smithing. Plot discovered. Another plot has been unveiled by our state security forces, and in the nick of time too. A rogue discontent within our military begins siphoning equipment and manpower to fuel the agitators. Quoted documents and logistic records, purposely misconstrued to make it appear as if no such plans were being developed. Now, that the scheme has been discovered and right under our noses, we may choose immediately crack down to reprimand the offending officers and soldiers, or we may use the state security to clear up the dissonance with one fell swoop. Citizens revolt. Farmer led demonstrations at first in all walks of life. So students, the old, and the just looking to cause mayhem. The revolution, as is being called by those ideologically fanatical, uh, or just early. Easily impressed members of this so called movement. The revolution had nothing to do on the one which lay the foundation for the formation of the Soviet United Soviet Social Stations. Yet this disturbance was poised to throw the red line back into its knees, and even bigger disaster word of these protests got out to our neighboring stations or worse. A deliberate and delicate handling of the situation must be taken. We can't afford to have both the military and the people out in resentment towards the government. Form the party? Form the party. Can't afford open hostilities. Dictatorialism or from the criminals that once were the highest crimes. Um Despots. That's fine. Sabotage revolution. Oh, we can do the inner forms of two. I'm gonna change our economy law, huh? Let's get back to the military. It's a weekly stability gain. Basic hygiene. That seems pretty pretty darn important. Sure, we can grab that too, because why not? <coughs> a victor. 
Polis. Where's Hansa? I was entirely sure where to shove these guys, but whatever. Crackdowns? Why not? What do we have here? Um, calling the demonstrations. Do some stability. Put some back. Sabotage revolution. All right. Crackdowns. Repress evidence. Rid the ringleaders. Inner reforms. The red line is straight away from his revolution ideals of class, socialism, and equality. It's become militarized and straight away from the very people who established it all those years ago. A conference of reform of the ends announced the party and the options or operations is needed to afford at winning back the love and loyalty of the common folk. Scale back military operations. I do want to get that one. I like more of the stability. Let's go back to military. Reintroduce the workers' councils. More community. More stability. The duration of the idea, huh? This mod moves very fast, which is really nice. Oh, did I just get rid of that? Whoopsie. Repress evidence. No word should ever come out about this protest, nor the mass and car searching which took place. Demonstrations never took place, never happened, and never existed. Meet with the revolters. After arduous talks, the meeting has been arranged between the central government and the demonstrators in a secluded area. Let's hope it all goes well. Repress the evidence. The protests were wiped up rather quickly, considering the average commoner doesn't move much, especially given the nature of the metro is difficult. For word to spread, only through agitation. Or passing gossip by wandering tradesmen can really only make the word of revolt spread. This container over the government's requisitioning of food in this neighboring stations is only going to make the rest, or make the unrest even worse. After some kind words and some elbow grease, these tradesmen are reluctant to loosen their lips about the going ons of the red line. Tightening security between stations will have made matters better. Through assets seized from the disruptive traders that has vanished under the mysterious circumstances of the checklists have no idea where they're gone. Uh, I kinda wanna meet with them, because that actually has something written here, so. The crowd stills. Can we actually get that one done? <coughs> meet with the revolters. After arduous debates between the still low members of the Andres cabinet, all parties came to the agreement that if the issues were to be resolved, then both the government and the protesters would need to resolve and come together. Andre, with his fiery arguments, still found it taxing to change the minds of even the most delicate supporters. To Andre, these grain revolters were simply commoners pretending to play revolutionary insurgents after hearing about stories of old. They have no idea how to properly run a big pig farm, let alone government. Debates reigned in from the night, and while so, those in the cabinet who opposed Andre, saying that the Red Line cannot afford to continue to degrade its ideals and sell its morals to authoritarianism, just like the Soviet Union did so at once, Lenin passed. A final consensus was produced after hours of debates on back and forth arguments. It's clear that these insurgents were anything more than what they appeared to be, drunk off the hype and mantra from the crowds of the sick and desperate which hailed them. Just wide eyed manipulators with a pendant for speaking. Had they not the gall of fanaticism to challenge the red line head on, they would have had done so already. Even giving them an inch, they'd take it for a mile, but always like this they would keep wanting and wanting. So it wasn't decided. So it was decided to arrange a meeting with the leaders of the demonstrators. It wasn't particularly difficult to track down the figureheads, although at first the reluctance for meeting made it almost appear as if the plan would fail. Andres is card up a sleeve. How did DSHK make quick order of the rousers an example to be made of? Both parts of an agreement. The ace was quarter we'll Go with that one. Crowd still. Let's deal with the mutinies. The military demonstrators must be dealt with immediately. Would be mutineers will be stopped. Let this be a lesson to turn their backs to the red line. Red mutinies. Enemies of the revolution lay all around us, and yet we fight amongst one another. These revolutionary and military mutinies are no longer or more, no more roadblock leading to the inevitable path of communism. A cancerous tumor upon a reign. The military serves themselves, and not to rule true ideas, ideals of Lenin. They must be removed, their power gone. Approach to the dissenters. Not all the dissenters are loyal to Kolchov. There does exist a large, rather large group of those who are loyal to the Andre. Furthermore, those are still faithful to the Red Line, the savage NKVD battalions. The NKVD are still very devoted, lar despite the large military having ulterior allegiances. Regardless of Kordobut's intentions, uh, oh, oh boy, oh my bad, ooh, despite his intentions, um... And so it remains unquestionably loyal to the Red Line. I'll see it to it that these kind of revolutionaries are squashed. With that, the NKVD are to be retrofitted and expanded upon, performing mainline battle duties in conjunction. Approaching the dissenters. Also, we're going to click on Red Mutinies. Which should be good. Remove the power of the High Command. Stand more days. Or lobby the Politburo. Approaching the dissenters. And those that have yet to pick a side have been quiet. 
As the seesaw taters from or tilters from one side to the other, a neutral group dare not choose a side and fear the opposing side will win. Less about, mo less about motives and more about survival than with both their position and the head intact. In ages past, they would have been shot regardless for not swearing absolute subservience towards the general secretary, but the pressing matters and the likelihood of outrage that would occur makes it difficult or not possible. More subtle and an indirect approach must be handled. Something Andre is fully committed to achieve, those generals would already have been fleeing, and the state security ha can handle those with ulterior motives. However, we can show them to them that there are no doubts about Andre's party coming out on top, though sure to swear allegiance to our cause, meeting with each other, the neutral, neutral generals in secret, to both gauge their emotion within their support. We can't afford the risk to lose more who would be loyalists? Um, out of sight. As the saying goes, the ticket of Lubyanka only goes one way, and uses as a political prison to house those who wish his ill will against the state. Now it could be used to house military forces which defy Andre's rule. Defiance will not be tolerated, of course. But I'll cry. Those who are lord of the red line must stand up, but it must be known those who stand in the way of the workers' revolution are no better than the vile fascists or bloated capitalists. The enemy is not only outside, but also within. Both of the enemies must be crushed. General siphoning manpower. Also, we lost a bunch of divisions just because I didn't realize that our supply points are really bad. Manpower is becoming more and more of a resource in the red line, a rare resource. Following the up, uh, recent events. Mm. No grenades. The largest military force in the Metronome is strapped for hands as the original command cracks and falters. Those savvy amongst the high command siphon manpower and personal resources to fill the roster. No more rugged conscripts than genuine soldiers. Those generals who are otherwise unsure or doubtful of Andre's reign is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Between the current general secretaries divulged and whispered as a milk toast, communist and dubious efforts to reform the military. The opposing side is rule of the descending cabal of generals and commanders led by Koshov, organized no more like a criminal syndicate rather than a fully fledged military organization. While well, no odds for hostilities have disappeared yet, conscription crisis is sure to be reach its peak when people are unwilling and unable to join the ranks. Whilst commanders absorb as much personnel they can muster in this case scenario, civil war does break out. Find recruiters and break their kneecaps. Find the recruiters and break their kneecaps. 45 days. We lose less manpower. And, wait. This is, this is 100 less days. And we get. We lose 75. 75 less manpower. And we get 20 political power. Why not do that one? Promote loyalty. Or martyrs disappear. Enable editing of all templates of this country and training or disbanding of units belonging to them. Sure. Promote loyalty. Though those who have remained loyal to the communism and to the central government, it must be known that we have their utmost respect and gratitude towards them. Name shame. It must be heard loud and clear. Those who are not loyal to the General Secretary, it's not loyal to the Red Line, no more than troublesome conspirators against the revolution. Sure. Court Marshal, then? Well, I guess we'll see. So we get 56 every month, which is pretty nice. Alright. Mutinies must be beginning to falter. We're commanders in short supply. Begin the great show trial. Martyrs disappear, yeah. Valorin, Yurik. Martyrs disappear. Lubyanka cells are full. One's housing no more than a few kulaks accused of dealing with illicit goods from abroad the Red Line, one major case to the next. The state security of the Red Line is hits hard. It's fast without remorse or second guessing as the interconnected web of subterfuge by traitorous entities collapse. Winning support for the secret revolution thanks in part to the lighting efficiency of our KGB. It is done. Well, yeah, let's see that one since we've got bonuses for it right now. Ooh. Begin the purge. Oh goodness, for 900 days. Crumbling military mutinies. Okay, well. New recruits. 10 political power for 30 political power. Oh, well, okay then. For 20 days, 20 days. So why would we, they're, the cost's the same. You lose 15 command power, so 35. You lose 35, but this one you lose 35 manpower as well. So you might as well do this one then. That doesn't make any sense. Great show trial. In the retrofitted maintenance room in Plotschad, a revolutcy, the show trial took place. Koshov was among the permanent generals to be accused of treason and his treachery against the general secretary in the state, citing anti-revolutionary, anti-communist conspiracy to assassinate Moskvin, overthrow the party, declared the line as his own. 
The debate lasted well into the following day and night. The entrance to the room guarded heavily by the Holy Most Lord of the General Secretary. As DSHK machine gun emplacement and a heavy stockade of soldiers entrenched, uh, entrenched weary of any would-be saboteur seeking to undermine the trial taking place. The verdict came with the early hours, hours of the subsequent day. Two whole days of trial with accusers justly found guilty. Immediately to be executed after the verdict was announced, taken directly to Lubyanka and to be shot by state security. Their bodies burned as did not inspire any would-be idolizers to their cause. The legacy dies with them. We get a standing force. Produce requisitioning. Oh, so we go there anyways. Okay. We went from this one. So we get 10% more army XP gain. More than double recruit ball population, but lost max training. Begin the purge. Um, remove crumbling military. Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably be a good idea. That's military drills. Well, we get more entrenchment, which is nice. Um, also trade with them a little bit, I guess. And there they go. All right then. Now what? Is that it for us? That might be. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I guess we do stuff down here too. Research speed. Monthly population construction speed would be pretty nice. Ooh, daily army speed gain as well. Political power gain if budget cost goes down. Even more political power. Weekly stability and war support. I kinda like this one too. 10% more construction speed though. It's it's okay. What if we were to do this one to get more stability and weekly war support? It's not much. Because right now, we get a little more change, which is okay. We can't use anybody down here. So... Is it glitched? I don't know. But we'll see in just a little bit again. Well, everybody, uh, it's 2034, and we're still just kind of hanging out. This is on historical, so maybe... I know the mod's not done yet, but... Oh, well. I wanted to see what the mod was like. They said there was an update for this mod, and there definitely was, but it was a lot of fun uh, when we had uh, focuses to do and things to read. But that's pretty much going to be it for here for now. Um, maybe it's just bugged. Maybe it's not. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great red line rest of... Your day.